Tom Cruise doing backflips. Hey! <laughs> Tom Cruise doing pull-ups. <laughs> and Tom Cruise saying, that's not fair. That's not fair! Told you. I'm Peter Billigus, and this is Money in the Movies. Hello and welcome to Money in the Movies, a show where we review films based on their financial accuracy. Today's film is The Firm, directed by Sidney Pollack and starring Tom Cruise, Ed Harris, Holly Hunter, Gene Hackman, and Gene Triplehorn. In the film, Cruise plays Mitchell McDear, the brilliant but broke Harvard Law School graduate who takes a job with a mysterious law firm in Memphis, Tennessee. Cruise's character comes from humble upbringings and he is impressed by the massive wealth that oozes from the law firm of Bendini, Lambert, and Locke. Reminds me of my dining room. But Cruz soon learns that there are some dirty secrets behind all this affluence. That's four dead lawyers out of 41. Turns out the reason the firm makes so much money is because they have one large and unusual client. Tom Cruise's character learns that there is one easy way to create a profitable law firm, and that is to launder money for the Mafia. Now neck deep in the conspiracy, Cruz uses his brain and his brawn <laughs> to escape. Whatever I know, wherever I go, I am bound by the attorney-client privilege. The film is based on the best-selling book of the same name written by John Grisham. Now I will say that that book is one of my all-time favorites. In my humble opinion, the pacing of the book is near perfect. But we're here to talk about the film. The film has, again, in my humble opinion, one of the best summaries of the United States tax system I have ever heard. Remember, in the movie, the firm of Bendini, Lambert, and Locke is a tax firm. They launder money for the mafia, but the firm is filled with tax lawyers. In one scene, Gene Hackman tells Tom Cruise what he thinks about the United States tax system. It's a game. We teach the rich how to play it so they can stay rich. The IRS keeps, uh changing the rules so we can keep getting rich teaching them. Wow. Let's look at that again. Gene Hackman is saying that the United States tax system is a game. He says that the tax lawyers teach the rich how to play it, and the IRS keeps changing the rules so the tax lawyers can keep getting rich by continually teaching the rich how to play the game. There is some speculation about how long the United States tax code actually is, but estimates range from 2,500 pages to 70,000 pages. Now, the range depends on which forms and documents you count. Do you count the text from past tax legislation or case law? Opinions vary, but whether it's 2,500 pages or 70,000 pages, that's a lot of pages, even for me. And I read all the books in the Game of Thrones series. Everyone would do it if it were easy. The point is, if we consider tax as a game, and if we assume the tax code is the rule book, and if the rule book is between 2,500 and 70,000 pages, well then you and I are forced to play a game where we don't know the rules. There's just too much information to keep up with. But it gets even more complicated than that. If you and I don't know the rules, it's tough for us to argue the rules. It's tough for us to say, hey, wait a minute, that rule is not fair. That's not fair! Exactly, but most of all, to Gene Hackman's point, it allows for two sets of rules. A tax code as vast as the one in the United States literally allows a politician to tell one group of people, I'm gonna tax this, but then to tell another group of people, hey, I've also written this loophole, so that even though I told those people over there that I would tax you, I wrote this loophole which gets you out of the tax that I just told those people over there I would charge you. Now in the United States, there have been many proposals over the years to simplify the tax code. In another video, I discuss the flat tax, the fair tax, and even a proposal called return-free filing, where the government would simply send you a bill for what they believe you owe in taxes, and then you would have the opportunity to pay it or argue it. In other words, you would audit them as opposed to them auditing you. But for now, we have a vast tax code, and it is a pretty complicated one. Obviously, the wealthier you are, the more profitable it is to hire someone to help you lower your taxes. 
In Gene Hackman's character's words, it's a game. We teach the rich how to play it. The IRS keeps changing the rules so we can keep getting rich teaching them. Which I'm convinced I can. For now, just know that I believe that taxes are one place where I think it's worth spending some time on strategy. No one, and I mean no one, can tell you the exact future of the stock market, the real estate market, the precious metals market, or the future of Bitcoin. But taxes, you can see the future coming because the government announces in advance the changes they are going to make to the tax code. The point is, I believe that just about everyone, and yes, I mean everyone, should move away from tax preparation and move toward tax strategy. What steps are you taking today to lower your tax bill two, three, or even five years down the road? In the United States, that might mean planning on buying a house, or putting a rooftop solar array on your home, or just buying a new high-efficiency water heater. Whatever you do, it's about strategy for the future and not just the simple act of preparing your taxes every year. So spend some time on tax strategy and don't be afraid to spend some money on strategy, hiring someone to help you. The few hundred dollars that you spend today could save you thousands of dollars down the road. As to the movie The Firm, as I said, Gene Hackman's description of the United States' tax system is perhaps the best I've ever heard. That's why I give this movie three out of three dollar signs. If you like this episode, please hit the like button below. And if you have a movie that you would like me to review, please let me know in the comments section. I'm Peter Billigus, and this is Money in the Movies.